Now let's turn our attention to South America where a big claim by Nicolas Maduro has sparked a debate. He's the Venezuelan president, Maduro. He says America's CIA has secret military bases in the region, inside the territory of Essequibo, controlled by Guyana and claimed by Venezuela. This region is rich in oil. It is also disputed. Maduro claims Essequibo belongs to his country, Venezuela. Guyana refutes this claim, and with good reason. They have administered Essequibo for a century now. They say it's theirs. So what is Maduro trying to do by dragging the U.S. into this dispute? He's trying to win some support by highlighting America's history of war over oil. Our next report revisits America's controversial past. A century-old dispute has flared up in South America again. An oil-rich region is at the heart of it. Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro says the Americans have their sights on the disputed region. And we have proven information that in the territory of Guyana, temporarily administrated by Guyana, they have installed secret military bases of the Southern Command, military nuclei of the Southern Command and nuclei of the CIA. This row is over Essequibo, a territory of Guyana, which Maduro claims belongs to Venezuela. In 2015, major oil deposits were found off Essequibo's shore by a consortium led by ExxonMobil, an American oil giant. Extraction activities started four years later in 2019, and they have transformed Guyana, generating some $1 billion a year for the country. But Maduro says this boom is effectively an American takeover, and Guyana's president Irfan Ali is working for American oil interests. The president and Irfan do not govern Guyana. Guyana is governed by the Southern Command, the CIA and ExxonMobil. And I am not exaggerating. Maduro's claims revolve around an office in Guyana. It was set up by the U.S. Defense Department. Reports say this office is for security cooperation and its staff advise Guyana's defense force. America maintains security ties with Guyana, providing military support and training to the country. Both countries also hold joint military drills together. And that's a problem for Maduro. Last year, he stirred up a storm. Maduro held a referendum, one that ended up reviving Venezuela's claims over Essequibo. For the longest time, Venezuelans have argued that Essequibo was stolen from them over a century ago. The referendum allowed Maduro to revive the claim and begin efforts to seize it. At the time, America stepped in. U.S. forces joined Guyana's defense forces and kick-started training exercises to keep Maduro at bay. The Venezuelan president now is drawing attention to this relationship and using the opportunity to inject fresh momentum into his campaign. America's history in oil-rich regions may add weight to his arguments. Before 2001, Iraq's oil industry was closed and nationalized. But the American invasion paved the way for Western oil companies to enter Iraq. Names like ExxonMobil, Chevron, BP and Shell established operations in the country and kicked off extraction operations. They remained in Iraq long after the American soldiers were gone. For Iraq, the invasion was a big blow to its economy as well as its financial reserves. Iraq lost around $150 billion worth of oil revenues. The funds were taken out of the country illicitly after the invasion. Maduro is bringing up America's past to make his case, but it remains to be seen if his arguments will find any takers.